other board members. If you look at that list of who's on the national board, they are all past chapter presidents. Several, several of them also held uh, membership director positions within their chapters. So the things that you guys are facing on a chapter level are things that we all are very intimately familiar with as a national board and are very important to us. Um, Mary did a great job of also introducing the national staff uh, at the membership level. Very important resources for all of you to take advantage of. Um, we are servant leaders on the national board. We have a great membership staff that's here to help you. Um, you're not in this alone by any means. Um, I wanted to kind of reference for everyone's uh, information my connections column that I put out uh, last month. There's another one coming out this month. Um, Membership growth in SMPS is really at the center of what we need to do as an organization. The more members we have collectively, the stronger we are as an organization. The better we can advocate, educate, and connect our members all depend on the volume of people that belong to the organization. Uh, we will certainly have more certified professional services marketers. If we have more members, uh, we're taking more credible and, and a higher level of credit. Blah, higher level of credibility <laughs> with our uh, companies and with our clients as, as we become a bigger organization. So um, I really want to challenge each of you to get out there and bump your membership numbers up. Um, hitting a 10% membership increase in each of the chapters is not an impossible goal for us. As we come out of this recession, we've realized that, hopefully out of this recession, uh, we realize that our membership numbers have stayed pretty strong. We've held pretty much a 79-80% retention rate amongst our members. That's fantastic for a professional organization in this kind of an economy, considering that the job that we do, by and large, for our companies is non-billable. Uh, I think we're in a, a really good shape, a good place to move forward and to really grow. Um, as we come out of this, this is the organization that's going to help our companies grow. And so the more members we have, the stronger we are. So I'm kind of challenging you guys to all get out there, bring in some big members. A lot of these chapters uh, that we have really can, can even do more than uh, 10%. The Alaska chapter has challenged me that they're going to double their membership uh, in the right. first year out of the gate. So um, it'd be great <laughs> the more of you guys who can do that, uh, the better off we'll be. Again, um, Holly and myself and all of the National Board, we are here to serve you and here to help. Um, please don't hesitate to contact us, uh, whether that's via email, phone, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, however you want to reach out to us. We're out there. We're accessible. And we're here to help you guys. So how's that, Mary? Is that a good intro? <laughs> that is great. Thank you so much, okay. Frank. I appreciate great. it. Um, and, and just tying into what Frank was mentioning about 10% growth, um, I just want to recognize um, SMPS Indiana on that topic because they did win the membership contest and they reached 15% growth, uh, which was a very difficult challenge. And um, we were very excited and proud of, uh, for them. And um, they did that in a time frame um, of six months. So again, um, Ben Bain was the membership chair, uh, or is the membership chair from SMPS. Um, actually, he's outgoing. But uh, he served last year. And he won an iPad 2 and a gift card. So um, that contest was definitely fun. It was a challenge. Um, but congratulations to, to Ben on that. Um, and, and moving on, that uh, speaking of the 80% retention rate, that is um, <coughs> has been has been um, across the board the trend uh, that we've seen. So our retention rate has been positive. Um, the focus that is our greatest risk, or what we need to focus on, is the drops. And um, what year that te te uh, technically tends to happen. Here's the stat, uh, drops by years of membership. This is just over the last two years, this is a statistic, but it's very telling. Um, the first to three-year member is our greatest number of drops, 68% over the last two years. So Tina, I don't if you want to um, hit on this uh, slide mm -hmm. as well and talk about this a little? Sure, I'm happy to. Um, we actually started putting these numbers together and looking at them much more closely when we launched the new member challenge. I don't know if many of you are aware of that. If you're new to volunteering, um, you might not be. But this is a challenge that we put out and had our board approve um, about a year, well, probably about two years ago now, because it ended in December 2010. Um, but what we recognized 
um, and what this, this challenge was all about was that, as you can see here, the first year member and the second year member, but primarily the first year member, was our most volatile group of individuals uh, in terms of the turnover and not renewing their membership. So, you know, aside from SMPS, but even working with demographics and other associations and nonprofits, this is just a trend everywhere. But what we see a difference of is for those individuals who become engaged, even at the, the smallest uh, level, even, even the time that they put in, those are the individuals who are most likely to renew their membership because they have a better sense of what that organization really has to offer. And, um, you know, it just, it just started showing a change in, in what those renewal rates were. So the new member challenge, and I know that's not right in front of you right now, but the new member challenge targeted those specific individuals, the first year member, to participate with um, SNPS in several different ways, to become engaged at a chapter level, a national level, to um, network, and to at least inquire about volunteering, as long as a couple of other items. So once they demonstrated what they, what they did, they, went, um, they were afforded or they were given a $50 gift certificate for you, them to use however they wanted. It was simply an American Express gift card. Um, the ultimate result and what we wanted to get was we knew that this wasn't necessarily about just all of these people suddenly renewing. We knew that that was going to be really a challenge. But we wanted data to really prove that that level of engagement was going to make a difference. So what I can tell you from the data that we finally had and um, what we put together at the end of December 2010, we didn't have as many people participate, um, but we had approximately 50 individuals take that new member challenge. Of everyone who could renew their membership, there were only two who did not renew their membership. And even at this point, the people who started from the very beginning, they renewed for a third year. So what we're going to be doing is re revisiting that new member challenge, maybe changing it up, working with our board to see how um, what would make sense for us to kind of continue this on and even um, get this to a greater level of participation. But what this means to you as a chapter volunteer is that any opportunity that you get to encourage your, your members to, um, to be engaged at, at lots of different levels and to you know, maybe they can, um, you know, certainly volunteer. Maybe they can support you at a given event, or, or certainly even just initially, just, just recognize them and 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 hear what they have to say, and and you know, find ways for them to, you know, be excited about going to your events. But all of these different things will definitely make a difference. So this is what we're we're asking of you. This will make a difference. And not only will they renew, but they will have an amazing experience as a result. And ultimately, that's what this is all about. Great. Thank you so much, Tina. And as she covered, uh, this next slide is, again, what we know is the greater engagement, the greater level creates understanding and value. Uh, real value equates to greater rates of renewal. Greater engagement supports success of chapters in the society. Again, the challenge is convincing that one to three year member to actively participate in society's activities locally and nationally. Um, here are some quick tips to engage. These, again, are um, may seem um, you know, um, minimal. They may see, be something that you're already doing, um, but it's just it's it's a good best practice. Um, I know a lot of chapters are starting to engage in a new member orientation. They've created that nationally. We're uh, going to be working on a um, new member orientation uh, to launch soon. We'll be doing that. Um, we haven't decided on exactly how often, if it's going to be every other month or every two months, but we're working on that. Um, but it will engage the new members that have joined during a given time frame. And we will discuss the value of membership, how to make the most of your membership, and um, you know why volunteer. That's going to be a large part of that orientation. Um, and and to paint the line back to SMPS, I think that's a message we uh, constantly have to um, talk about with new members and even our seasoned members. Um, Frank um, definitely has um, some great stories about about that information. When you know just going to a meeting, coming back and, and meeting with your membership team or all of your team and discussing what it is that you learned at that last educational meeting, um, taking notes, bringing back articles, giving your principal the article, uh, a couple of articles in the marketer that you find interesting, that you know that your principal would find interesting. You know, continually saying SMPS and, and getting that message out to your uh, colleagues and to your principal will help them understand that this is a valuable association to you. 
and that they are constantly hearing you talk about it. And that really does uh, send a message, and it does help um, carry that value to your principals. Um, also, member touches. Uh, important, again, first reaching out to them the first couple of years, uh, making sure, um, you know, we have quite a few member touches that we do with all the new members and also, you know, nationally, and we'll go over that, and it's also in the membership section of the manual, so that will be, we'll touch on a little later, but making sure that you're pulling down your reports regularly from the extranet, that you're, you've got t created template emails, just have a quick email that you've already created that you can just drop in a name and send out as soon as that new member comes through and you see their names. Um, we are also, um, just a quick note, uh, going to be working on, um, it's, it's a new IMSR database upgrade. It's called, um, I'm sorry, Ron Worth is waving at me right now <laughs> the door. <laughs> are you talking about the task center? Yes. Okay, the task center is um, going to be an upgrade to IMS 15, and that's something that's going to help us even get the information out to you a little quicker regarding new members. That was, a, I know, something that had come up come up in the past, and so that's an exciting uh, new add to our to our database tools. Um, ambassador programs and guru guidance um, are a couple of programs. Again, oh, sorry, let me go back. Um, that I know some of you have done. Um, Houston is a huge, uh, has a great ambassador program. I know many of you do. DC has a guru guidance program. These types of programs are fantastic for engaging the new member right away. Um, again, it seems so small, but what I know uh, DC does is they have a badge, a certain color for new members for that first year. And every time they come to a meeting or event, they have they have that badge. And so other season members, um, they're aware of that, and they make sure they talk to them. They also, um, part of the Houston ambassador program, program is that each uh, board member is assigned a couple of new members throughout the year, and they make sure to, to call them, to just pick up the phone and call and say, hey, we know you're a new member, I, I, and they set it up demographically, so there's a little logic to who they assign each new member to, and can I get over there to pick you up? Maybe I can pick you up before the next meeting. Um, we know that the new members, when they feel engaged in that first year, whether it's through volunteering or just making a friend, that their chances of renewing are much, much greater. So those member touches early on are vital. Um, again, those, those ambassador programs, if you want more information on how to set them up, what, what the Guru Guidance is all about, again, that's the DC chapter. Reach out. Go to their website and check it out. They have it all laid out there for you. So you can just literally adopt it for your chapter. And um, an Envoy program is something else that they have done. They um, you know, when a new member checks in at the registration table for a meeting, they make sure that, that they have a little uh, list of volunteers for that specific meeting, and that person meets them at the registration table and then walks them around that meeting and sits with them and introduces them to individuals. So something to keep in mind. Also, recognition of new members, making sure that, you know, b during a meeting um, or prior to a lunch or event that you have that new member stand up if they feel comfortable doing that and recognizing that they're a new member and, um uh, doing that prior to some of your events. Share your stories. Um, each of us has a story about SMPS, why we're here, why it's important to us, how it's changed us for the, for the better, for our professionally or personally. You know, and you know, knowing those stories, I've talked about um, at PLS this year with the, the incoming presidents that you know, use your next board meeting to go around the table and share your story, why you're a volunteer, how it's impacted you, and listen to what your other board members are saying, and and remember some of those stories. Um, you know, you may be in contact with a senior principal one at one moment, and maybe your story won't impact him, but maybe someone else in your board or your table has that story that you can use, that you can say, well, my friend John or the board, you know, this is why it's important to him, and that could be a selling point for you. So I think it's very important for you as a board and, and volunteers to talk about it um, at your board meetings and discuss why it's important that you're here and, and what are those selling points. And I think that really, you know, we can talk all day about features and benefits in our educational programs, but it's those personal stories that really matter. Volunteer interest surveys. These are just smaller, again, small things that you can do to reach out to those one-year, one- to three-year members early on. Send them a, a survey. Say, hey, what are your interests or what are your skill levels? And right here um, on this PowerPoint, we have a free Zoomerang account for you to use. So there's all kinds of past surveys in there that you can use and you don't have to create your own. And I've created a couple of those myself. So if you just want me to send it to you, I can do that. Again, small but important sign-up sheets at, the, at every meeting and event have sign-up sheets for everything. I know Indiana does a, what's called a template. I think that's a really cool thing. They just have this template saying if, if 
we know we you can't commit not even maybe maybe a half an hour or an hour but let's get this list and I think they have 25 30 people on it and those individuals have volunteered just to give an hour of their time but if they give that hour maybe they give two hours maybe and then next time when you call on them to maybe step it up and be membership chair they'll already be acclimated with with what the volunteer role means and they'll already kind of made that connection with you um, recruiting volunteers throughout the year. Don't wait until the new program year creeps up. I know a lot. It's there's so much going on, and you guys are extremely busy. But that's why it's so important to do, to do these efforts throughout the year, so that when it gets closer to the summer and the, and your new year is about to begin, everyone's not scrambling to fill positions. Um, on a new on to the next slide. Um, this is very very exciting. 30th year. We have quite a few anniversaries coming up uh, this year, and uh, that we'll be celebrating in 2012. Um, happy anniversary to all of you. We've uh, sent out some information um, a while back to the 2011, and I know Boston, Charlotte, and Maryland. A lot of these chapters are already celebrating and having fun events. Um, and, and you know, utilize each other, find out what's going on. Uh, we nationally have, are working to create a 30-year um, anniversary, or actually it'll just be an anniversary logo, and you can, you can put in the year. Because um, we do have Oklahoma celebrating 10 years and some others that are at the different year mark. Um, but we have close to 23, I think it's 23 chapters going to be celebrating their anniversary coming up. So if you need information from me on your history, you want to get some list of past presidents, you want um, some, you know, some, some information to write articles about your chapter, just reach out and I can find and dig around for you. Um, but this is a time, again, this is going to help you throughout this year to, to really highlight your chapter and all of your accomplishments. So if you see your name here, please contact me. Um, I'll be sending out some more information to the chapters directly about your anniversaries and it will also be um, in SNPS Connections and a few other places. Tina, do we have any questions at this point? I just want to make sure I'm not... No, I had a couple, but they've been answered, so I think we're fine to go. Okay, good. Okay. Um, let's move on. Okay. And um, chapter four. Oh, Mary. Do you want to go back? Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Well, all, no, all I want to do is the, the questions that were asked, just if anyone was interested, it was more about the presentation and the recording. So when all of you get a copy of the recording, this full webinar will be um, in view as well. So it will be the audio and the presentation, just in case you're curious. Yes, I, and I, I, am, I know I'm going quickly. There's so much to cover in this hour. But again, this will be recorded, and you can um, you know, take it back with the rest of your team and, and listen to it again if there's um, some information you think you might have missed. Uh, Tina's going to help me with this. Uh, SMPS National Resources. There's, there's many more resources that, that, than are listed here, but these are definitely um, some vital ones for you to know about. Management and leadership training, conference calls and webinars, and bribe private board calls. Um, the management training typically is the PLS conference that we have for incoming presidents. That's every April. Also, we do leadership forums at all of the regional conferences. So if you're attending a regional, make sure you sign up for that leadership forum if, if you're a volunteer, or even if you're interested in volunteering. If someone's interested in it, bring them along. They can kind of learn and get to know what's, what it's all about. Um, also, we offer a leadership forum, a three-hour session at the national conference. So these types of forums throughout the year, please try to participate. Again, we have conference calls and webinars just like this. We'll do it on finance, we'll do it, um, you know, we'll have calls regarding education and my SMPS overviews. And if you have, you just want us to be on a call with you for, for a situation you might be having just privately with your board or if you just want us to do a, a presentation like this just for your board so you guys can ask questions and be more interactive, we'll do that for you. Um, my SNPS community. This is um, a great resource for everyone, especially for the volunteers and the members. I can't get too um, into it because I can easily do that, but I am going to um, jump out really quick of, of this. I'm going to jump into my SNPS um, because I want you to see what it looks like. If you're a volunteer and you haven't been into my SNPS, um, please sign in. As chapter leaders, you're automatically um, invited into this uh, community. There's 689 of you in this community. This is a place, if you go to www.mysmps.org, go once you've logged in and you use your same login as, your, uh, as you would on the national website, go to my page, my communities. If you're a volunteer, you will see the chapter leaders community. 
why I'm here is to show you uh, that this library here is where we put a lot of our information, the chapter management manual, contest information, logos, everything that you could possibly want for chapter management. And if it's not here, please let us know. Just let me know via email and I'll find it for you. And I'll make sure it's in this uh, library here. But this should be your resource throughout the year for you uh, to locate information. Or if you're just looking for samples and models, you need an idea. This folder here, Models and Samples, I'm going to click on it real quick, has um, all kinds of different information in here. And we're asking you constantly, please, the chapters, to send us information, your postcards, things that you're doing that are great ideas for the electronic version to me so that I can share it with other chapters. That way you guys aren't recreating the wheel. This is, um, you know, we, we don't want you to have to, to do that when you're coming up with new ideas. So just quickly, regarding membership, here's the membership folder of samples and models. And you can see the long list of uh, different postcards that are in here. Um, this is re uh, brand new. Um, this was an email that went out from the SMPS Oregon chapter. I'm just going to click on it really quick. And it's an email that they send to um, their members that are about to renew. It's a great little email. And you can just take this, plop it into your own, you know, change it up a little bit, and then you're good to go. You've got an, an, an email template right there for you. So again, these, um, these resources are already here for you. We know that you're extremely busy, and we appreciate your energy and time. So this should help alleviate some of it. There's different resources in here. Please sign on. If you're not familiar with my SMPS and you just need a quick tutorial, please contact me, and I'll make sure to, to, um, to, to explain all of it to you and take you through um, a, tutor a tutorial. We'll do a little mini training session with you. Again, the shared samples and models, check that out. Uh, Tina, do you want to talk about the recruitment mailing? Sure. Um, the recruitment mailing, if, for those of you who have not taken advantage of it or are not familiar with this, this is SMPS National's way to directly support your recruiting efforts. So um, once annually for every single SMPS chapter, um, SMPS will do a couple of different things depending on what your specific needs are. So for example, you saw, um, well, I don't know, she didn't pull up an actual postcard, but we have several copies of postcards um, that we have either helped design or we have supported financially for our chapters. So if you happen to know that you have a campaign coming up or whatever it is that you know right now you want to focus on recruiting those new members, many times what our chapters want to do is they want to send out a mailer um, based on you know, an event that's going to bring in new members or maybe you just have like a really great message or something innovative to say. What we'll do for you is either, depending again on what your needs are, we'll either um, reimburse you for the design, the printing, and the postage cost. We just need to know and pre-approve it um, to ensure that it is, it is indeed for recruiting purposes. If, however, you don't have a whole lot of support and you need someone to help you design a piece, all you need to do is give us plenty of time, typically about a month, um, to work that with you. So whatever it is that you want to relay the message uh, the message it is you want to relay, we'll work with you. We'll put together a couple of samples of a postcard or uh, a typical mailer, and we'll, we'll, we'll get you to approve it, OK, it, and we'll go ahead and we'll mail it for you with your distribution list. And we'll go ahead and send it to the printer. We'll take care of everything for you. We'll um, put a source code on it so we can also track to see if you know anything has come as a result of that particular mailer or that event. What Mary is showing you right now, and this is really cool, we showed this at the um, Leadership Forum at conference, was Northeast Ohio's uh, recipe sweet for sweet success. And it's really very innovative. It's fun. And you guys, we know you love to do this type of things, and we encourage you to do that. But they designed this. They took care of it, and they simply asked to take advantage of being reimbursed. And that's exactly what we did. So um, you know, people ask sometimes, well, is there a limit and how many? And you know, sometimes we have sent out as many as 1,000. One of the things that you need to pay attention to, though, if you want to take us up on this recruitment effort, is if you go into work with the list, make sure that list has good names on it and not the director of marketing or not just a generic uh, title, because those just aren't sound, smart, prospect list. So we will send to anyone that you feel is good, but we do want a name and a specific individual to send that to. If, however, you do not want maybe a postcard or a mailing, we will um, instead take, um, we'll, we'll either 
work with our membership coordinator, Franco Holmes, or hire someone to do a telemarketing campaign just for recruiting. And together we can work on the script of what it is that we want to get and, um, of course, put together all of that information as a result of the teleconference and the, and the questions and the spreadsheet, and, and we'll share it with one another and make that available for you in follow-up. So there are a couple of opportunities. We're just trying to find a way to make sure that we're helping all of our chapters in recruiting. So if you haven't taken advantage of this, um, now's the time to make that happen. And that's it for recruitment. Okay. If you can quickly just also hit on um, the chapter leaders update and the next uh, three items, just quickly yeah. touch on those. Uh huh. I'm happy to. Um, again, the Chapter Leaders Update newsletter, if you are not familiar with it, this is a newsletter that we put out each season. Um, all the archives are put in the My SMPS community. And what's important about this, especially for every single volunteer out there, it, it's challenging sometimes just to make sure that you're getting all the information that you need and different ideas or different things that are going on nationally. This is a really great place to immediately take a look at. So when it's sent to you, it's going to be sent to you as um, an HTML message and saying, you know, the newsletter has been updated, take a look here. And it's going to be a link um, to the location in my SMPS. If for some reason you want a printed version, we can go ahead and send that to you as well. But it's important because information on, um, you know, certainly reports that are due, the listing of all chapter, new chapter CPSMs is on here. Um, the last, the last um, issue of the chapter leaders update, it talked about the membership growth contest, all the details in that. Um, and it also has some other information on like finding and keeping volunteers. Here's a form in here that we put together that's kind of a check uh, checklist of, of things that you're looking for in a volunteer and things that a volunteer may be looking for and how you can match those up. So if you're not taking a look at this, you know, you might be missing out on some really great ideas and also some really critical national news that is important for all of you to be aware of. So please take a look at that. Um, and, you know, if you haven't seen one in a while or you'd like some back issues and for some reason you can't get it, um, you know, get it from the archives, just give us a call and we'll get you exactly what you need. Um, and then opportunities to connect with SMES National Board. Um, I mean, ba basically, this is, this is just an opportunity to make sure that if you need kind of a different perspective or you need someone to maybe come to um, your event or share, be a part of your strategic planning or any type of board meeting or something you just need that extra um, insight or, or support from, whether it's the staff or whether it is um, the national board, you know, we can find ways to make that, make that happen. And also with the national committee chairs, all of you, Mary just went ahead and, and created the membership committee um, chairs community in my SMPS. And she'll be doing this for other groups as well. But this is a way for you to connect and share your ideas. We are always trying to find ways to make that happen. So whether it's through the community or a list that we can give you in Excel with all the emails to, to get back with one another and just, you know, you know that DC did something but you don't remember who the membership chair was, these are ways that we can help you out and make sure that you have that information immediately. <coughs> you will also find this information on the updated membership section of the chapter management manual. Is there anything else on that, Mary, that you'd like to chat? No, that's not it. That's it. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, good, good. Yes. Um, just that the National Board, again, is, is there as a resource, especially if they're, um, we have seven board members, if they're near you in your state, um, any of the fellows, um, you know, tap into your fellows and your CPSM and your board members. Um, fellows are a great, um, can, can advise you in many different ways, as well as CPSMs and, and the National Board members have been able to participate in some of the strategic planning as well as the national staff. We, you know, when that time comes, um, it, it, We'll, you know, um, throughout the summer and, and when a lot of those planning sessions are going on, the board and staff are able to participate in those sessions. Um, that's all I have to add in that. And then moving on to Striving for Excellence Awards, um, Tina, again, if you want to. Well, sure. I'm happy to touch on this. Um, many, many of you have already participated at some level in the Striving for Excellence Awards. Um, and some of you hesitate to participate because you feel you're just not ready. And if you're not familiar with it, just, just 
quickly. The Striving for Excellence program, the full program, is a, a set of criteria that is outlined in that you're asked to meet and identify in a submittal, um, and you're going to be compared based on the size <coughs> chapter you have, and we have judges and a committee to, to work with us on this program. What's really great about this Striving for Excellence program, though, is that even if for some reason you think you're just, you're just not ready or you're not, you can't compare to some other chapters or no way are you going to win, the reality is, is that this is a perfect way to give yourself a, an audit, a, a self-audit, because it identifies all the critical areas that a chapter really must cover in managing your small organization, because that's what you are. So it covers administration, it covers finances, it covers programs, it covers sponsorship. It covers communications. And if what you'll find if you go through the process that you know maybe there is one area you just haven't even addressed and it's really important. All of these things ultimately, if you can check off on them and you know that you're handling them in, in a good, sound way, then you're just kind of giving back to your members <laughs> as well. So even if you feel that you can't win, um, it's definitely worthy of going through the process. And and then of course then you know you do want to win, and if you put together a submittal, there are, if you feel that you you don't have everything covered, you can certainly submit for your a given program, a special event, or an educational program, one you know one specific program, or maybe you have an awesome website that you just developed, and you really think that it deserves recognition, and and might be um, you know might be uh, you know. You know, up there for an award, those are opportunities for you to take advantage of as well and, and the newsletter. I will tell you that the new criteria for the Striving for Excellence program um, is not on the website yet, and we are working with Kevin Hebelthwaite, Holly Bolton, and a couple of other volunteers to maybe change this up a little bit and expand it into something beyond Striving for Excellence in terms of ways that we can help um, develop certain standards and criteria for chapters. You'll learn more about that in, in the coming weeks and, and months. Um, but I just want to give you a sense, if you're looking for that right now, it's not there, but you will find something very soon. So if you have any more questions about striving for excellence, um, certainly give us a call. In past um, submittals, winning submittals can also be found on my SMPS if you want to get a sense of um, how they're put together and what the, what the winner's programs look like. Great. Thank you, Tina. Um, and, and like she said, part of that, checking out, as for, from the membership perspective, checking out these award, the award-winning submittals. There's some great ideas regarding, you know, great membership drives, programs that they've done that have, um, you know, brought in prospective members and turned them into members. Um, so reading through some of these submittals, the, at least the award-winning ones, um, can give you those ideas on membership and how to think outside the box and what other chapters are doing that have, that have worked. So from the membership perspective, um, it, it's worth taking a look. Um, again, the dedicated, a dedicated staff who supports you at, in every chat every chapter's development. Um, again, I can't tell you enough um, or say it enough that Tina and I and this whole entire staff are here for you um, throughout this year. Please, you know, any questions that you have, anything related to membership, if you're unsure about numbers or some of the reports that you see or the, you know, online chapter reports or the My SMPS community, or if you just are thinking of an out-of-the-box out idea and you're not sure how to pursue it, reach out to us and give us a call um, or shoot us an email and we'll be certain to uh, get back with you and, and come up with some ideas. Okay, um, moving on to chapter management manual. Get to know this manual. This manual is given out to all of the um, incoming chapter presidents. So at PLS this year, your your president that's serving now received this chapter manual on a flash drive. It is also in the My SMPS chapter um, leaders community. Um, it's in multiple locations. These are the different sections of the manual. So again, the president, your president probably broke it out and gave these sections to each um, of you know governance and finance for the treasurer and communication for your communications person. There is a membership section. Now what they have on their flash drive, um, we've recently updated. We took the, old, the membership section that they have. So we will be sending you the new member updated membership section will be um, uh, sent via email after this call. It will be in the community. And we will also um, be sending out in the next week, uh, my colleagues and I are working on a little care package for every membership chair. You'll be receiving a box of goodies. Um, and it's just some brochures and applications and things to get you started out for your year, um, CPSM postcards, things that you can put out, especially when prospects walk up to 
you after a meeting and ask for some more information. You will have some literature on hand. Some, some of the other things in this care package will be um, just items that we need to get out to you, and this will be part of it. Tina's going to print this section, uh, individual section, for each of the membership chairs, and you will receive that in your care package. Um, Real quickly, I have it here, just to briefly, um, just, we, we don't have to spend a whole lot of time on it because you're going to receive this, but I just wanted you to see what is in this document. And it's important because you get this, please read it, understand it. Um, this is important information for all membership chairs and all board members. Having, um, we have already written messaging and value propositions um, that were worked on by our, the staff and the national board. So the messaging, how you know, talking about membership, knowing how to talk and sell membership, is is you know, if you said to yourself right now, give me the you know eight second or whatever it is, the elevator speech. What would you say? Um, you know, and you don't want it to sound rehearsed. Have your story, know your story, which is, makes it more personable. But also, there's value propositions that um, will help you when you're talking about a chapter, when you're talking you know, two different individuals, a different level of prospective members. Um, there's stuff in here about membership orientations, um, the chapter reports, leader resources, um, again, models and samples, all of that information. Um, Tina, if you just want to give a quick overview of some of the other things, um, we're at about, uh, right now, 10 after 3. Okay, um, not a problem. Um, just to give you a quick note on what you're looking at right now, um, I just finished this, so I have it into communications right now for um, some final edits, and then we do want our, our board to take a look at this as well, but we are going to make this available to all of you as soon as possible, and as well, alongside the membership, all the other um, management areas in terms of governance and um, programming and sponsorship and regionals, all of those will be different sections that will be available to all of our chapter volunteers as well. So it's not, this section specifically is not up on my SMPS yet because we're still not quite finished with it, but it will be in just a matter of a day or two. So just want to give you a heads up on that. What's important here, though, um, as Mary said, really take a look at this and read what's in here. There are just some sound things that a lot of uh, chapters might be doing already, but some things you might not have been thinking about. But also what's important for you as either membership, um, membership chairs or presidents or uh, any volunteer within the chapter is, Mary, if you stay on this page, this helps you understand what we're doing at national as well and how, you know, because you don't get to see these things. So, you know, here you'll find, even if you go up to, um, we are, if go to the next page, Mary. Down? Yeah, down. And the member, one more time. This is, this is, um, I'm trying to go to, right here, the fulfillment effort. Here, just so all of you are well aware, we spend a lot of time and a lot of effort in refining our fulfillment effort. Our fulfillment effort starts from the moment a member joins. So what you see here is a schedule of what we do in the membership department. So upon joining, what a new member will get from SNPS National, what they'll get for six months, what they'll get on their first year anniversary. Then it shows you what we're going to do for renewals and what we do once an individual has dropped their membership. We are constantly, constantly working on this list. So if there are things um, that we can even do in conjunction with you, and there are a couple of examples that we have that are linked in this. Uh, the section of the manual. Um, there are letters that we can share. We just did one, I can't remember if it was Alaska or another chapter, but there are things that we can definitely work in conjunction to support what you're doing at a chapter and then invite them to look at things at an SMPS national level and hopefully get them to either join or again renew their membership. So again, take a look at this, get a sense of how all of this works, because sometimes you get these questions and you know, you'll know you easily be able to answer them if you're, you're taking a look at these different things. Mary, I'm going to go ahead and let you talk about the chapter extranets and reports, because I know you have a quick um, link to that. Okay. Um, so great. Thank you so much for highlighting the membership section. Again, we will be sending that out within the next two days to you. I just really suggest every membership chair really get to know it, read through it, and share it with your board. Um, this is the next slide. Um, I thought I had the extranet was next. I'm going to jump um, to the extranet and we'll come back to those campaigns. Um, the online chapter reports extranet. Every membership chair automatically has access every at the beginning of every program year. Um, an email goes out, several emails um, starting in July through August to make you aware of the extranet, how to get to it. 
um, what it is, um, how you have access. It's live data. The extranet is linked, or the online chapter report site is linked to our, our national database. So it's, it's live data. So when a member contacts us and updates their information, if they do it on using the online form, if they um, just joined, um, you know, an hour ago, especially if they join online, that's going to be showing up on your on your report. So it is live data. Um, every, who has access? The presidents, the president elects, and the membership chair. Those uh, three roles, uh, three positions, automatically have access to the extranet. Each chapter can have up to five leaders with access. All you have to do is email me. The president needs to email me and let me know who those additional two uh, leaders are, and we'll go ahead and make sure they have access to the extranet. Um, signing in is very simple. You just use your member number and your first initial last name. Um, whoops, sorry. Uh, the, you can easily export the reports. And I just want to show you really quickly, um, I am going to jump in. I just, you know, here's my extranet. I saved uh, the chapter reports link under my favorites. So if you're membership chair, just save the link right there. Make it easy so you don't have to dig for it. Um, this is um, the welcome page. I'm going to actually sign on as um, another member. Hmm, who would that be? Who is that? Hmm. Um, okay, this is uh, um, <laughs> Jana. She's uh, o Oklahoma. Um, actually, she's membership chair this year, but she has served SMPS uh, for many years. Um, and I just wanted to log on as a, another leader, not as myself, so you could see what it looks like. But this is the extranet. This is how quickly you can get into your information. Um, I'm going to quickly just open up the chapter roster. Um, it's for Oklahoma. You click Submit. This is live data. Again, it's the information, um, everything here, their address, zip code, email, um, the person's website, and there's some other demographic information, uh, the person's specialty, the member's primary discipline, their primary function, birth date. All of these things are very important. Also, if they've asked to be excluded from email or mail, they have a check mark or an X in this in this area. You need to be aware of that and make sure that you're not uh, sending emails to those individuals. But real quickly, just a little um, show you how quick this goes. When you want to export it, just quickly select all, right click, copy, open up your um, Excel document. You paste it in two seconds. I know most of you are familiar with Excel, but if for some reason you're not, just remove the first five rows, highlight them, delete, then you highlight your whole entire document, and just quickly format. Again, if you're if you're not familiar with Excel, I can do this. It's it's about five clicks. I'm done. That took me about 15 seconds to just copy and paste it into Excel and clean it up just a tad. And now I have my list. I can easily send um, an email blast. I can do um, labels, whatever it is. Um, email uh, mail merges. What I want to discuss and I wanted to show you is that this is you know so easy to 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 use and making sure again that you're you're jumping in here and you're getting your new members um, your new and transfer members for the month of um, September, we can quickly see Oklahoma had three members. So hopefully um, they run this report a couple of times during the month and they can quickly send out an email, welcome that new um, member. It's only, you know, it's three. They can easily make a phone call um, and welcome them as well. So making sure that you're you're jumping into this extra net, you're getting here and you're you're downloading your reports and you're getting the most up-to-date information. I do know that a lot of you have you use registration systems like CVEN and and one two three and Eventbrite and Star Chapter and you have uploaded your list there. Um, but I do think um, and I know that a lot of your members when they register for chapter events they update their information um, through your registration system. So maybe your list might be even more up to date than what you see here nationally. But it is vital, and this is why I'm touching on this, that chapters place links on your website, membership, this is very important for members, um, so that they can quickly click a link to update their information through the national office. That way we're all working on the same information. And all you should have to do is literally download your roster and take that new information and upload it to your registration system or for whatever purpose you're going to be using the list. Um, because we want the national information should be the most up to date. Um, again, we understand that that you know individuals are always updating through other um, through your system. So it's it's going to your website. Um, the national website is is very easy to get in. 
and update their information. I just want to show you real quick, if you haven't seen the new national website, um, <clears throat> we launched a, not a new site, but it's a new look um, back in June, the more of the back end updates. But here it's very easy to join. If you just take these links and place them on your national website, uh, excuse me, on your chapter site, um, you know, update your information, and then there's a link directly to um, the My Account area. So any member that needs to update their information should come to the national site. Uh, when you get those emails and requests or you see that someone's information is old, please direct them to the national website to sign in, go to the My Account, and they can quickly update it, um, update it here. Okay, so chapter reports, again, if you have any questions um, related to the chapter reports, um, I'm trying to get back to it, but I think I... Um, closed about. No big deal. We'll, we're going to move on anyhow. Um, please contact me, Mary Cruz, at, at um, Mary at SNPS.org. If you have questions about what you see, the different chapter reports available, um, please let me know. And I'll be sure to, to walk you through the process and, and we can talk about it. So we are at uh, 10 minutes. We did it. Tina, believe it or not, we're at 320. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, we wanted to give enough time for uh, questions um, and, and, you know, to go through any anything that we um, did, weren't able to cover in much detail. Again, please send us an email. We'll make sure to follow up. This webinar will be available. So if we went through kind of quickly, make sure you listen to the recording. Um, I just wanted to, to highlight one thing. I try to do this with every membership web, uh, webinar one chapter that has done something kind of cool recently that brought in um, a, good, a good number of members with just one event. Um, there's actually a couple chapters I want to highlight. One is SMPS Indiana, and again, um, Ben Bain is from there, and he's the membership chair that, was a, that won our contest. Um, but one of the events that they did, they actually brought in, I think it was like seven to nine members just from this one event. Many of you probably have this, and you know how important it is that one three-year member to really engage them. Um, but they just went to a baseball game. They went to a baseball game, and each each member had to pay for their ticket to the game, and they were allowed to bring one prospect. They and they couldn't even come unless they had one prospect member, and they brought that person with them. And there was no fee uh, for the prospect, and um, they just enjoyed. Um, again, they just enjoyed a game. Um, and they actually brought laptops. So someone at the stadium had wireless. They had um, a laptop, and they actually sat with the with the prospect and said, "If you're interested, let's do it now." And they signed them up literally right there. Um, and they got to you know meet and greet and have a great time. And it was already taken care of. It was a huge success. So if you want more information on that event and how they did it, um, contact uh, Ben at the Indiana chapter. Um, Mary, I'll, I do uh, have a question Tina. when you're okay. ready. Sure, go ahead. Okay. Um, I, who was it? Rachel Westling? I'm not sure, mm -hmm. Rachel, if I'm saying your last name correctly. Mm -hmm. um, but Rachel had a question about student memberships and um, how the student memberships work, the college student memberships, and um, if chapters should be pursuing this. So I'm just going to address this a little bit. Okay. Go ahead. Um, you know, well, first of all, there's, there's information on our website uh, about student members, who qualifies, and, and what they need to do to apply. Um, you know, certainly there, there are a few of our chapters who have successfully put together a student chapter. I know that's specifically not the question that you're asking, though. Um, but there's a couple of things that we need to consider with, with student memberships. Um, first of all, pursuing them just, just independently and on their own always worthwhile to try to bring in new student members. But the amount of time that we put into it, it, it can be challenging. And so that's why, especially depending on where your chapter is located, and if you have some really, um, uh, if you have a, a great area where some successful universities are located, you know, you might have an amazing opportunity to reach out to a group of students and develop a chapter. And we can connect you with all of those different chapters that have um, set something up. And we even had a task force to put together guidelines in developing a student chapter. Um, but that said, what, what we recognize at SMPS National, and we are working on this, is putting together um, 
you know, a presentation that will that any one of you can maybe either share with the student or put on your website or certainly our website as well. But um, maybe you have an opportunity to present in front of um, a, a student a student group and really explain to them the value of SMPS and exploring marketing in the AEC community. And so we're working on that. So it's a very special, unique uh, message to that group because I think that in in marketing in colleges and universities today that's kind of an element that's, that's left out, and they don't always understand what that opportunity is. I also want you to know, too, just as far as a student <laughs> member is concerned, that once um, a student has been you know, a member for a little while, and maybe they've just graduated, um, we are working very hard to make sure that they're at least here for another year, because you know, they might not have a job right away to pay the full member fees. Um, so we extend to them, as long as they were immediately a student member previously, we'll extend an additional year of membership um, at that student rate for them so they can you know, ease into um, you know, their jobs and opportunities, but really stay with us and see SMPS at a, at a different level outside of being a student. So if you have any other questions about students or any of you, you know, certainly give us a call. We will connect you with those individuals or those other chapters that have some really great stories. And, um, and you, know, you can get some answers there. This is also a great place to use the community and ask questions about uh, student members and chapters and, um, and the like. So I hope I answered your question, Rachel. Yes, and just to tag on to that real quick, again, um, I'm on the national site. Um, if you just come in here, click on membership, um, you can quickly um, access these forums. And again, they're all on um, the My SMPS community. But um, to place links on your site, um, there's some information quickly about the student member. Um, and the paper application, it's an interactive uh, PDF, so you can email it to the student member. And Tina, I'm not sure if you mentioned, them, lastly on this, is after um, a, a student has graduated, we extend mm -hmm. one more year of student membership at $25. I might have missed yeah. if you said that. Yeah, I just said that. OK, good. All right. Um, then again, using the national website um, to, to to, you know, when you're looking for information for your site, 10 reasons to join, making sure that your information on your website is up to date, because we know that members or prospective members are going to the chapter sites. Um, so making sure I've been on you know a lot of the sites and they've and they've been updated and and they look great, um, but there are certainly a lot of chapter sites out there that still have old information, old member forms. Um, I know one site I found um, chapter site had an old membership form from about five or six years ago. So um, we send out alerts and notifications about you know with the new um, newer forms when they're updated, making sure you as soon as you receive that form that you update it on your website. Um, again, if you need forms or you just can't find them in the community, um, please let me know and I'll send it to you. Um, but using this this language here and you know copying and pasting it onto your site is just fine. Um, you know, making sure that we're all saying the same message. And um, again, a lot of this information was updated in June uh, when we um, re refreshed our site. So um, utilizing this as well. Um, Tina, did you have any other questions at this point from anyone? Um, let me see here. I don't see any hands raised. Um, well, yeah, actually, I do have another question. This is about okay. members who might have lost their job um, and what, what National might be doing for them. So let, let me just share this. I know we only have a couple of minutes left. But you won't find anything, certainly, on our national website to say, well, if you've lost a job, this is what we can do for you. But what we do, especially for those members who have um, been truly loyal to SMPS for you know, several years, and they're finding themselves in a position where you know, I really need to be a part of this, but I'm just having a difficult time. What we ask you as chapter leaders to do is encourage those individuals to reach out to us um, specifically. They can either call Mary Cruz or they can call me, Tina Myers. And what we will do is we work with them and see if we, maybe we can offer them, um, depending on, on the way they have worked with SMPS, or maybe they have been a chapter leader, or maybe they are continuing to be a chapter leader, um, or they've just been a member for a really long time. We don't want to lose those individuals. So typically, we'll find a way to extend the membership or offer them an installment payment plan. 
Also, as chapter leaders, you should know we don't want any of you to lose a volunteer, um, especially one who really works so hard for you because they cannot be a member. We will, uh, or they cannot renew their membership for a given reason or a point in time. All you need to do is work with us and call us here on staff, and we will. I promise you, we will work with them, and we will not let them lose their membership. So um, that was just really quick. If you have anything more specific you want to um, have answered in that light, I'm happy to do that. Just give us a call again. Okay, great. Well, we're at the 3.30 mark. We did it. We stayed on task and on time, which is great. Um, again, we just want to thank each and every one of you for serving, for dedicating your time. We know that it takes a lot of time and energy um, to serve an association, and we certainly appreciate it and all of your efforts. I just you know, can't reiterate enough that we're here for you. Please use the community to, to connect with other membership chairs and share ideas and uh, share those great things that you're doing or questions you have, challenges you're faced with. You're not in this alone, and we want to work this together. We're a team. So um, anything that you need at all, please contact us anytime. Um, and we look forward to the next webinar coming up um, in the next couple of months. Thank you all. Um, if we didn't address anything, please shoot us an email, and uh, the recording will be sent out uh, by tomorrow. Thanks, um, and have a great day. Tina, do you have anything else? No. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye.